now we're going to look at five of the best moves of one of my personal favorite players of all time, Rashid Nezmedinov, otherwise known as Super Nez. A fantastically brilliant attacking player, maybe the best ever attacker of all time. I'll let you decide that. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel now, and I'm going to show you a little bit of magic from this five-time Russian champion. In this first example, a legend of Soviet chess, Pogolevsky, has just played rook to h1. But the white king is hanging in the center of the board, and the next move just embodies the kind of chess that Super Nez played. And I remember seeing this next move when I was a kid, and it really was inspiring. Can you see the move? No retreat, no surrender. Remember, pause, draw these examples if you need to. Rook takes f4, blasting his way through the board towards the white king. Now in the game, white took on h2. If white had taken on f4, black can now play, can you see it? Bishop takes f4 check, knight takes f4, and knight takes c2, when white has to give up his queen and still be under a major attack. So after white takes the queen with rook takes h2, we now have a double check, rook to f3 check. King to d4, black lines up the bishop, bishop to g7. a4 and Nez just keeps throwing the pieces at the white king. And the one thing here is even though white is a queen up, that king is totally bare in the middle of the board. c5 check, luckily white has on passel, but black recaptures with the renewed threat of c5. Bishop d3, the only move, trying to make the king an escape square. Knight on e takes d3 with a big, big check. King to c4, and now it's force mate. d5 check, pawn takes, pawn takes d5, king to b5. The pain doesn't stop for white yet. Rook to b8, king to a5, knight c6 check, and white resign because after king to a6 there are two different ways three different ways that black can checkmate i'll let you find the moves here an amazing example there but there's more to come this next example just embodies the idea of a positional queen sacrifice something that not many players are able to do black has just played bishop to f6 attacking the queen now most mortals here would think oh my queen is attacked i will retreat it but remember, Super Nez has superpowers. He comes at you like a storm. And here he plays Queen takes F6. And this is a simply astonishing idea because of dark square control of and squares in the center of the board. The point is, if that queen is taken, white will recapture with the bishop, and then the knight has this lovely square and access into the black position. Similar happens in the game, knight to e2 check was played first, and after knight takes, pawn takes, white simply moves his knight back to c3. And even though black is serious material back, with the knight occupying the central square and the dark squares being all under Supernez's control, this proves to be a long-term piece of simple magic. I'll show you some more moves, rook e8, knight d5, threatening a big check, Rook comes to defend that one, and now the bishop increases its power. King g7, and white simply plays with all his pieces. Rook d1. This rook has a very good future. It's slow torture here, but it's torture that black can simply not deal with. And eventually white breaks through towards the black king. Still, the game goes on for a little bit, but the whole idea of this original sacrifice is something which sparkles uh, and creates a lovely piece of art on our 64 squares. I thought for our third example, we need to do something a little bit more simpler. I say simpler, it's white to play and win here. And this one is still very nice and crystal clear, but it has a lot of beauty involved. Look at the black pieces. What on earth are they doing over there? It's like they've run off the board and they want to huddle in fear. So it's clearly time to strike. Knight to f6 check. And this blasts open the black king. Black has to take this one 
otherwise a white rook will dive into the seventh rank. But after pawn takes f6, white simply recaptures with the idea of bringing the queen to g7. Simple and crisp tactic. King h7 tries to defend, but after a check and queen to g4, black resigns in this position. Now I'll let you guys discuss what may happen if black aims to defend with rook g8. Black saw that white has a killer against this. Can you see the killer? I hope you can. Take your time if you can't. Relatively crisp and simple tactic here. Super Nez has trapped his opponent's king on the king side. Can you find a way to finish the game immediately? White to play. Knight to f5. And the seemingly impossible move threatens checkmate on e7, the queen, and in a lot of cases, queen coming into d8. What can black do here? Not much. If black takes the knight in any way, black loses the queen, which would be enough to lose the game. If black plays queen takes queen, knight to e7 is a simply lovely checkmate. The game continued with queen to c5 check, but after bishop to e3, there's multiple threats. Queen to d8 and bishop takes queen. Queen to c7 was played, but knight to h6 forced resonation because rook takes f7 is going to be checkmate next move. Sometimes it's a good idea to leave the best until last. And I believe myself this is such an example. Super Nez has the black pieces. He has many arrows lining up against that poor little guy over there. But how does he break through? And again, try to think of the most forcing moves because that is the way to do it in this position. Queen takes h2, check. King takes h2 as force, but now the next move is the key part of this tactic. Knight to g3. If king to g1, rook to h1 is checkmate. And if king takes g3, pawn to f4 ends the game. Simply fantastic. I hope you enjoyed those examples. Comment below what was your favorite example. Also do like this video and subscribe to the channel. Have a little look at these videos.